we are building the drive rail assembly. All right, for this step, you're gonna want to gather your materials. You're gonna need two pieces of 408 millimeter long C-channel, two of the channel end caps. You'll need four of the 40 millimeter long M3 standoffs, along with four of the tensioning bushings. You're gonna need some hardware to be able to assemble everything together. Uh, we're looking at about 26 pieces of the M3 hex cap screws and four of the M3 nylocks. From your previous steps, you're gonna to need to bring in the chain links that you worked on that are 56 links long, your single sprocket, double sprocket, and drive sprocket assemblies, as well as the ultra-planetary gearbox that is already attached onto the motor itself, or, or onto the bracket itself. You're also gonna need a few tools to end up completing this step. You'll need a nut driver, a 5.5 5 millimeter crescent wrench, as well as a 1.5 uh, millimeter Allen wrench. All right. To get started, we're going to end up clearing off our workspace so that we can have a little bit of area here. Now that we have some space to build, let's take our piece of C-channel as well as the ultraplanetary gearbox assembly, and we need to attach the gearbox assembly to the piece of channel. We're going to want to end up having this located in the fourth hole down from one of the ends and making sure that we end up al aligning the output to that bearing hole. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to place our motor where that needs to go and we're going to try to line these up. We're going to want to get a couple of pieces of hardware to get started. And then we can kind of drop these into the hole and use gravity as our friend. Now we're going to go ahead and flip this over. And when we do that, we're going to want to make sure that we hold the screws in place. Next, we're going to want to take our lock nuts here and we're going to want to start uh, feeding those onto, getting them finger tight onto the ends of our bolts. Uh, this way we can end up removing our fingers from the backing of them and finish tightening them up all the way with our tools. Now that we have these fingers finger tight, we can start by taking our tools, our crescent wrench and our nut driver and start to get these uh, tightened up. So we're gonna go ahead and set this down. Once those are set, we're just going to want to make sure and check that this is centered into our, our bearing hole and we're looking pretty good there. So we're ready to move on to our next step. We're going to need to get two of our channel end caps and get ready to place those onto the ends of our channel. So we're going to go ahead and put one end down here. Once you have those finger tight, you can use your nut driver to tighten them up. Then you're going to want to do the same thing on the other side. Once this step is complete, you're going to want to go ahead and get all of your drive shaft assemblies to start being able to put those on next. We're going to start by using our 
single sprocket and our double sprocket assemblies. And we want to remove the shaft collar off of the end and set them aside for use a little bit later on in this assembly. So we take off the one for the single and we take off the shaft collar for the double. Now, we need to put these drive shafts into our channel. The single drive shaft is going to be going into the fourth hole down from the far end of the channel from the motor. So we're going to put this in our fourth end, and then we take our shaft collar that we removed just a few seconds earlier, and then retighten on that shaft collar. Next, we're going to want to use our double sprocket assembly. So this is going to be used in the middle of our channel to transfer the motion and power from our motor to the rest of our wheel set. So this needs to go into the middle, which is going to be the 13th hole down from the end. So the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And then we go ahead and we take our remaining shaft collar and put that back on. Next, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to put on our drive shaft wheel. But we need to do the same thing. But here we're going to be removing our omni wheel from the end. So we want to take the omni wheel, take the shaft collar and the omni wheel, set those aside, as well as one of the through bore, short through bore bearings that are on the end, and set those aside for later during our final assembly while we finish putting together this drivetrain. And we want to take this and put this on the interior of the ultraplanetary and then slide the rest of our pieces all down so that the bearing, the short through bore bearing, is completely seated in the bearing seat on the channel. Now that we have our sprocket shaft assemblies and our drive shaft assembly attached to the channel, uh, we're going to want to go ahead and get our chain connected so we're able to provide power to what will eventually be our wheels. So let's start by collecting some of the items that we need. So we need some of our chain that was preformed previously. We also need to get the tensioning bushings and our standoffs to be able to get those in the correct locations. So what we're going to do first is we want to get our standoffs put in the correct places. Uh, the standoffs themselves can be anywhere along uh, the, the chain ring. Uh, what we tend to like to do, however, is putting them a pretty close to the sprocket themselves so that we're able to make sure that we have the right amount of chain wrap on the sprocket itself to be able to make sure uh, that this system runs really, really efficiently. So we're going to start by taking this first one uh, and we're going to put this in one of our uh, holes over here. And for this step, we just need to get these nice and finger tight. Also, we're putting these in one of the slotted locations, so this allows you to kind of, you can adjust the tension of the member uh, as you're kind of going on a, a little bit here. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we have that kind of put up towards the top and we can come back later uh, and tighten that down. And so we're going to want to go ahead and repeat these steps over the cross the rest of our channel so that we can make sure that our chain wrap is going to be the amount that we want it to be. All right, now that our standoffs are in place, we're going to want to go ahead and get our chain uh, onto our drive rail here. So what we're going to first want to do is we want to take uh, the chain and we want to start by putting it onto the sprocket that is on the motor side of the channel, so the one that's the closest in, since the second uh, sprocket set is going to be running out here on the exterior. So we're going to take this and we run it through the double sprocket first, make sure that we get this underneath the standoffs, and we can start getting this onto the sprocket here. Next, what we're gonna wanna do is then take this link of chain and kind of push this onto this shaft here, and we can work on getting this started and get that up and over. Um, one tip that you can do is you can loosen the shaft collar a little bit on the back here to be able to make this easier to get on. If you're still having difficulty getting your chain onto the shaft, you can also use the nut driver and put that directly onto your hex shaft and give that a twist, and it should help to get the chain up and over on the sides. So now that we have this chain set, let's go ahead and do it on our second one here. 
I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. We're going to start with the double sprocket here in the middle. Make sure that this goes all under and then move this over to our drive rail sprocket here. All right, now it looks like all that is nice and complete. Once this is done, we're going to want to go ahead and grab our tensioning bushings. This is a good time for us to be able to put these in. And then we're going to want to go ahead and just finish up the drive rail assembly by grabbing our last piece of C-channel. We're going to go ahead and take this and we want to make sure that we put the shafts are going through the, all the, the same holes that they needed to be in on our other side here so that they're able to be fully supported. And then make sure that the short through bore bearings are going to be seated completely into the channel itself. So we just make sure that that's all nice and tight. At this step, you're going to want to go ahead and we can start by feeding these connections into the U-channel end caps on the end here. Now that the end caps are fully secured onto the ends of our channel drivetrain, it's now time to be able to attach our tensioners and get the tensioning just right for our chain drivetrain here. So what we're going to want to do is we want to get the rest of the hardware that we're going to need for this, a couple of uh, pieces of M3 hardware, and look in here to be able to seat our seat the other end of the, the standoffs in here. So we're going to go ahead and get this one started. And once that's started, we can tighten that down with our nut driver. I want to go ahead and then repeat this process for the remaining three uh, tensioners that we have. So while we're doing this, we're going to want to press the tensioners down into the chain and then tighten them in their furthest down position. Uh, this will help the chain run in a little bit. And make sure that it stays the proper, that we have the proper amount of chain wrap and chain tightness as we're going forward. And we make sure that we get this one placed in here all nice and right. Let me get the last one in as well. This is also a good time to go back over the other side of these tensioners and tightening those down so that they do not move during operation. So we're going to go ahead and tighten that end down and then we're going to flip this back over and just tighten down the rest of these. Now that our end caps are fully seated and we have both of our sets of our channel uh, connected together, what we need to do now is finish attaching our chain tensioners and the standoffs on either side. So what we're going to want to do is kind of flip this thing up so we're able to get a good look at it and get some of our hardware to get this ready to slide into place. Now what we kind of want to do here is while we are attaching these standoffs is we want to make sure that we're also uh, getting them in place for them to be able to work as the tensioners that they're supposed to be. Uh, if you over tightened the one end, you might want to go back and loosen up your tensioners to be able to give these a little bit of a little bit more wiggle room to make it easier for you to be able to line it up on the other side of the channel. So this one was a little bit too tight. So now we're going to loosen it up a little bit. Now we can get a little bit get in here a little bit easier to be able to get our hardware in place. So now we're able to take this and we're going to kind of slide this. We want to slide this down and in and then we can get it nice and tight 
when it's slid all the way down and in. All right. Now we're going to want to go ahead and repeat this for the remaining three tensioners. Now that we have all of our screws in place for these tensioners, uh, we just want to make sure that the chain is, is taut enough and that we have enough chain wrap on our sprocket. So it's a little bit difficult to see from this uh, angle on the camera here, but what you're going to be looking for is for the chain to be coming up and around and being able to engage on the other side of the sprocket from where it's going to be running from. Um, the way that you're able to kind of push down the tensioners is since they're in these angled slot sections of the channel itself, you can basically loosen up either end and then physically press down in between the two channel sections to get this to pro provide the right amount of chain wrap that you're looking for. Uh, what you're going to be wanting to aim for again is for this chain to be wrapped all the way around each one of these individual sprockets uh, so that you end up having the maximum amount of chain wrap and you're able to have a good amount of, uh, good amount of power being transferred through to these shafts. If you want some more information on what chain wrap should look like, check out our doc the rest of our documentation on sprockets and chain. It has some more information there. You're going to need to repeat these steps to be able to build a second drive rail so that we're able to move on to the final assembly.